This, uh, the pr problem can be formulated in a more general setting, but for convenience, I'll uh, restrict to the simplest case where it's meaningful. So for this hour, x always denotes the following object. This is called primitive funnel. And what that means the following. This is a smooth variety with the following property. The first of all, Picard group of X is generated by one line bundle L, and this L is very ample. So uh, this means that X is naturally embedded in the sections of L. And uh, I assume that uh, for all X, CX, this is defined as lines through X. Uh, lying on X. This is non-empty. So the third condition is that this is non-empty. So in other words, this is uh, X is covered by lines. So that's the condition. So this is the meaning of primitive final variety. Satisfying these three conditions. So there are many examples. Now, uh, this CX, we will regard this uh, view CX as a sub-variety inside the tangent space of X because, uh, because uh, uh, lines, lines on the, pro on the projective space is given by the tangent, can be identified with the tangent at that point. So you can view this uh, space of lines through a given point as a sub variety of the uh, project by tangent space. And uh, in, if we view it this way, then I usually call it VMRT at X. Yeah, shorthand for a variety of minimal rational tangents. So you collect all the tangents to minimal rational curves, meaning in this case especially is meaning is just lines through that point. Now uh, let Z P n minus one uh, n is dimension of X a fixed variety. Then we say that uh, X has Z isotrivial VMRT if uh, for all, all general this is CX inside inside the tangent space is isomorphic to Z inside Pn minus 1 as projectively. So at each point, the structure of this Zx is the same at each general point. Then I say that uh, X has Z isotribute. So this is also definition. And also, another definition, X is quasi-homogeneous if the automorphism group of X, X on X with uh, open orbit.
Okay. Then it's, uh, so sometimes it's called almost homogeneous. This. All general points are equivalent. Okay. Now, uh, if x, okay, so x is uh, uh, quasi homogeneous plus primitive, then it's easy to see that x has z isotrivia. Uh, VMRT, where uh, where G is just uh, this VMRT at one point, so C uh, x zero so x zero. Okay, it's obvious, huh? because uh, if uh, the automorphism group send uh, this C x at a given point to another point. So if it's quasi-homogeneous, then it is, uh, yeah, if it's quasi-homogeneous, then it has G isotrivial VMIT. This is so obvious. Now I will state the problem. Problem G. Problem G is that X is primitive. Uh, and uh, with G isotrivial geometry. Is X quasi homogeneous? That's the problem. So the, the other direction. The, whether you can check whether a given variety is quasi homogeneous or not, just looking at uh, the space of lines at each point. And uh, one reason behind this is that, in general, it's very hard to prove that something is quasi homogeneous. So we try to find some way to proving a given variety is quasi homogeneous. And the, this question is uh, whether you can check it by pointwise uh, checking the space of lines, whether you can say this. So that's the problem. And there's uh, one result along this line. Uh, this is uh, by Mook, White, and then myself and Hong. Maybe the other way, sorry. Hong and myself. And the result is the following. So we consider G mod P. This is homogeneous uh, primitive variety. So all these conditions plus homogeneous, not just quasi homogeneous. Uh, homogeneous. In this case, it's known that P is uh, maximal parabolic. Inside simple uh, Lie group G and uh, associated to to uh, a simple root of uh, complex simple group G yeah M maybe I will call this alpha now assume alpha is is a long root and then G and P n minus 1 is just C0 for some O0 in G mod P. So let's set this way. Then, uh, then if X is primitive with Z isotrivial 
uh, VMRT, then X is actually equal to G mod P. That's what we proved more than uh, more than that. So, uh, in particular, X is uh, homogeneous. X is. But if X is quasi homogeneous, uh, this doesn't imply that Z is quasi homogeneous. Hmm? If X is quasi homogeneous? Quasi -homogeneous it doesn't imply that Z is quasi homogeneous. Z is quasi homogeneous? Yes. Uh, not necessarily. At there are examples. Let me see. Uh, you will see there's almost no example, of course. <laughs> because uh, if you assume here that Z is quasi homogeneous, this will be much easier, probably. If Z is so quasi homogeneous, if, if I assume that Z is quasi homogeneous, this, uh, in this case, is much easier, already known, in general, much harder. Harder than general problem? Yeah, harder than general problem. Uh, harder than known uh, quasi homogeneous cases. So you will see, you will see why this is so. Anyway, so this is one case where the answer is affirmative. That you can check uh, quasi-homogeneity just uh, checking that this Z is uh, of a given type. But for example, if you, uh, instead of a long root, if you put short root, then Z is quasi-homogeneous. The answer is unknown. It's very hard to prove something like this. On the other hand, here's one example. This example is due to Fu and myself. We checked uh, recently. So now LG This is a Lagrangian Grassmannian. Uh, with, uh, and this is embedded by some big PN, P lambda and C 2 N, uh, by Plico embedding. Now let X be, uh, this is of course homogeneous, this is homogeneous. Now let X be hyperplane section. Uh, general hyperplane section. Uh, then X has Z isotrivial VMRT. Well, this G is actually homogeneous. This, this G is homogeneous. Uh, you can see it's a quadric. Baron is embedding of quadric. Uh, but X is not quasi homogeneous. So this is a counter example. The, 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 there are some Z where the, the answer is no. And for some Z, uh, the answer is yes. And that's why I call this problem Z. It depends on Z. For some Z is uh, affirmative, some Z is. So, so here you say that it's degenerate. Hmm? Z is degenerate in this example. No. You say, what is Z? Z is a hyperplane section of... Uh, uh, yeah, the, so it's a hyperplane section, it's no to be no, it's a, hy it's a hyperplane section, but inside the X, it is non degenerate. I understand. Yes, it, yes. But it's hyperplane section, so it's some case. In some sense, it, does, it isn't. Uh, okay, you can. <laughs> but it is uh, difficult to see. I mean, Z is the second baron is embedding of quadri, so itself is linearly normal. It's as good as any example.
So it's, uh, you see, this program really depends on z. And here, uh, so far, the known case is where uh, z is homogeneous. Actually, this condition that alpha is a long root is equivalent to saying that uh, this z is homogeneous uh, under this assumption. Among g mod p, those which have homogeneous z is corresponds to long root. And if it's not homogeneous, then it's short root. So mostly, it, the problem has been studied in the case where z has many vector fields. And uh, today I am uh, going to the other extreme case where z has absolutely no vector field. So uh, one result along this line. Okay, so here's the main theorem. Z in P D is uh, smooth, irreducible. And uh, the first condition is H0 Z K Z tends to 1 equals 0. So this means in particular Z has uh, no vector field, no non zero vector field. So it's not just to non-zero vector field, it doesn't have vector field, even after twisting. So it's very, very, very rigid. Uh, not, not rigid, what is it? Uh, very far from homogeneous variety. That's the condition. The second condition is that G is strongly tangentially non-degenerate. And this is the notion we introduced this morning. And that's why I'm interested in this concept. Then, uh, x primitive plus z isotrivial EMRT. Uh, then, x is quasi homogeneous. So this is one case where you can give an uh, affirmative answer. So sort of complementary to this, uh, this case. Okay. Now what's the application? I mean, you, you may ask whether there's such a quasi homogeneous variety. Where the, uh, actually, there's no, no such a quasi homogeneous variety. So this theorem, the, the I mean, the advantage of this theorem is sort of giving negative results instead of positive results. So let me give you one corollary. So you said that X does not exist, or what? Such X doesn't exist, actually. Well, I, so why did you write X as homogeneous? Uh, because this is a theorem. If there is such X, suppose there exists X with this property, then it's quite homogeneous. But to show that that does not exist, one has to use this. So it's a sort of a conceptual theory. And I'll give you an example now. The corollary. This is uh, uh, non-degenerate, linear in non-degenerate. Uh, smooth, complete intersection. Of multi degree M1 ML such that first M1 plus ML is less than N minus 3. This condition says that x is primitive funnel and uh, uh, cx cx is uh, uh, complete intersection 
So in other words, this condition means that roughly, uh, assuming uh, this morning, this says that Cx is uh, strongly tangentially non-degenerate. This comes from this morning, essentially. And the second condition is that M1, ML is different from the following. 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So these are exceptions. Either quadric or cubic hypersurface or intersection of two or three quadrics. So I have to exclude these cases. So the, under these two conditions, uh, VMRT of X is not isotrivia. That's the conclusion. So if you consider a uh, smooth complete intersection, in most cases you can say that the VMRT is not isotrivia. But this, uh, this is how you check using the theorem. That, uh, if it is isotrivial, because this VMRT is of the type so this condition is, uh, these are four types, excluding these four types, is this is equivalent to saying that uh, H0, CX, TC, this group is zero. <laughs> we need to exclude these four because uh, for these four types, this group is non-zero. Okay. So the second condition, uh, the first condition doesn't hold if we for these four types. So if you assume these two conditions, then these two conditions are satisfied. So, so if X has isotrivial VMRT, then X must be quasi homogeneous. But uh, we know that uh, smooth complete intersection of this type is not quasi homogeneous. They have no vector fields. So this cannot happen. So, so using this theorem, you can check that uh, such a smooth complete intersection does not have uh, isotrivial VMRT. But this is uh, sort of looks like using very complicated theorem to prove something very simple. But this simple thing is very hard to check. But are there at all examples of where Z is variety of general type? Uh, yes. Yes. But which example? You mean quasi homogeneous and? No, this. Uh, this type? Uh, yes, of course, because. Uh, no, no, no. Z is of, uh, of uh, general type, but variety of quasi homogeneous X. Ah, there's a, uh, uh, among Picard number one, there's no example. Probably this, so we can prove this, no? No, that's very, 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 very hard. So, so even this case is uh, checked, uh, uh, only this year I checked this. So let me tell you what one previous result. So the previous result. Along this direction, I only know this one, Landsberg and uh, Robles. Two, ten. And they show that uh, general hypersurface. So X is general hypersurface. Uh, of course, degree between 3 and n plus 1, and n. Uh, then uh, VMRT of X is uh, not isotrivial. And this they proved by checking explicit example. For one simple type of hypersurface, you can explicitly calculate its VMRT and show it is not uh, isotrivial. But uh, for example, if you ask for, like here, arbitrary smooth hypersurface, then uh, this kind of method doesn't work. It's based on examples. 
And also, if you go to a higher co-dimension, then uh, this method gets too complicated. So, so this, uh, this one approach looks rather heavy, but it's still um, more conceptual. It gives more conceptual answer why it doesn't, why the VMAT changes. Okay. So that's the result I like to discuss. By, by the way, as a side remark, a uh, primitive quasi-homogeneous variety are very hard to classify. Uh, you have no idea how many they are, there are. So homogeneous, uh, primitive homogeneous varieties are completely known. They are G mod P. But uh, if you ask for primitive quasi-homogeneous, then there's essentially no result. And in particular, uh, for uh, linear sections of Grassmannian, we still don't know which of them are quasi homogeneous, which are not. So this uh, seems to be more, because most of our machinery cannot be applied in such questions. So quasi homogeneity is usually very hard to check. And that's why it's, uh, I got interested in this kind of. Linear sections, you mean those logical dimensions? Yeah, logical dimensions for glass miners. General, still unknown. Okay, so now I'll tell you the idea behind the proof. And so the most interesting case is, uh, thing is why this notion is there, this strongly tangential land dizziness, and also this, these two conditions, why they need it. And for that, I will uh, start some general theory. General theory of uh, uh, checking of which variety is quasi homogeneous. And this is uh, somewhat differential geometric. I mean, one reason that uh, corollary like this is difficult to check algebraically is that uh, even if you are given an algebraic equation for x, if you want to find equation for this VMRT, it involves derivative of the equation. So you have to compare the derivative at different points. And that's the difficulty. And if on the contrary, you assume that Z is complete intersection, doesn't it help? Hmm? I, I assume Z is complete. Yeah. Uh, for this question? Or? Uh, for, for the, the, the same question. It's there, but it's complete intersection. It should be there, no? No, no, uh, you know, in this case, we already know that... No, no, no. I mean, uh, another question, but mm -hmm. you assume that Z is complete intersection, and the same problem, are there uh, much more quasi homogeneous varieties with Z? Ah, then it's uh, easy, actually, yeah. yeah. That's easy. Okay. Now I will start some general theory. So let's forget about this for a while, and just looking at this very general situation. So M is a complex manifold. So you should view this as some small piece inside the CN. Just open set, open set. And uh, uh, a sub-manifold C inside the tangent bundle of M. is Z cone structure if for all at Okay, that's the definition of Z cone structure. Whenever you have a sub-manifold where each fiber is of fixed type, then I say it's Z cone structure. Okay. And uh, Z cone structure is uh, locally homogeneous. If there exists an open set, and the uh, vector fields V1, 
P1 on U. Uh, whose lift? Uh, okay, spanning TU everywhere. So they generate the tangent vectors at every point, and uh, it's lift and uh, lifts. You can lift any vector field to the tangent bundle by integration. So you can lift it to, in particular, to project by tangent bundle. If this is tangent, the lifts are tangent to to C. Then I say it is locally homogeneous. And conceptually speaking, locally homogeneous means that you have vector fields in every direction, which preserve this structure. I like to view this as a structure on the manifold. And these vector fields, these local flows, preserve this structure. So local homogeneity really means what it should mean. Okay. Uh, from, say, differential geometry point of view. You are given certain structure on the manifold, and these, uh, these vector fields uh, preserve this structure in every direction. That's local homogeneity. Now, why is this relevant to us? Here's the we have the following result. I proved the mock to one. So x is primitive uh, plus g isotrivial. Then, uh, by definition, you can see that there's a M in X, Jalski uh, open, uh, with uh, a G cone structure, C in PTG, uh, where CX is just, uh, uh, where the fiber is, is VMRT. See? That's the definition of uh, G isotrivial VMRT. G isotrivial VMRT means that at every point, the VMRT is of the given type. So if over an open set, they form exactly like this. They form a sub-bundle, sub-manifold, sub, sub where each fiber is of the given type. So uh, this uh, G cone structure exists whenever you have G isotrivial VMRT. Now our result says that uh, if uh, this G cone structure is locally homogeneous, then uh, X is quasi homogeneous. That's our old result. This is usually called Katan Fubini extension, Fubini type extension theory. So by checking local homogeneity uh, analytically, you can say that the variety itself is quasi homogeneous. And uh, the proof is uh, just the idea of proof idea is you have these vector fields on you preserving uh, C. Then you can, uh, what you do is analytically continue this continuation. Give uh, vector fields on X. So you can uh, gener generate a global vector fields on the given final variety, so it gives quasi homogeneity. Okay.
So the main issue is to prove our uh, theorem, the main issue is to prove the local homogeneity of this uh, uh, VMRT, this core structure coming from VMRT. So how to check uh, local homogeneity? So for that, I need to uh, introduce a few concepts. So a local trivialization. So, he, uh, so let's assume that uh, so here the setting is you are given uh, M is complex manifold and C is Z cone structure. So under this assumption, I consider the following concepts. So a lo local trivialization, local trivialization means that you trivialize the tangent bundle as a product of the open set with the of vector space. So a local trivialization is Z local trivialization. If uh, theta sends C, you have this guy inside TU, the, the cone over C. Uh, it sends this C hat to uh, U cross G. G hat. So this local trivialization trivialize this cone structure. Then I say it's Z local trivialization. Okay. And uh, a local trivialization theta is parallel if d theta equals zero, uh, regarded as, as v valued to form. What it means is this, that whenever you have such a local trivialization, you can view it as v valued one form on the manifold. Because it's uh, assigned to each tangent vector, a vector a vector in V. So it's a V valued one form. So I consider this theta. This is V valued two form. So if this theta is zero, then I say that it's a parallel local trivialization. And then uh, and theta is conformally parallel if V F theta equal zero for some volumetric function. Yeah. Now uh, proposition. A Z cone structure uh, with conformally parallel uh, trivialization, a uh, Z local trivialization. Is locally homogeneous. This is uh, all essentially trivial. You, you just write down what this means, then it shows that if this theta is zero, then you can integrate them to coordinates. And then uh, these coordinates give, uh, the coordinate vector fields give this, this uh, vector field preserving this structure. So what I wrote here are essentially elementary, completely elementary. And they are all, all completely local. It's something holds in you know, local coordinates. There's no global geometry involved.
So uh, first here we reduce the problem to local homogeneity of this structure. Now by this proposition, the problem is reduced to finding conformally parallel uh, trivialization. So how to find the conformally parallel trivialization? Now here's some uh, more non-trivial differential geometry now. The given uh, local trivialization theta you can write if you take d theta this is now v value the two form so see this is uh, v value the two form And theta cos what is theta? This is uh, what is square v value the two form. So you can write it always in this form where sigma theta is home what is square v v value function. So you can always express uh, whenever you are given local trivialization you can always express d theta in terms of theta, where is theta, using a function whose values are home, where is square v to be. And this is called, uh, theta is called the structure function over theta. So whenever you have a local trivialization, it defines a structure function. And it's, the structure function has values in this vector space. Now, you, the local result which explains why we need the strongly tangential non-degeneracy and so on. Okay, so here's the, again, completely uh, elementary result that dimension m is 3. And theta is local trivialization. Then this is conformally parallel uh, if and only if sigma theta uh, takes values in sigma prime. So this is what we introduced this morning, sigma prime of PV. So if this structure function, which has values in home wedge square V to V, if this uh, structure function has values inside this smaller subspace, then it is uh, conformally parallel. And this is just uh, proof is just a Poincare lemma. It's a good exercise, so you, maybe you go home and check the Poincare lemma. Okay. Now the so so far it's all just local results. There's no geometry involved. But now comes the key theory. So this is the really the main thing. So maybe I write the th key theory over here. This is uh, important result. Let me write it. Key theory. So th this is a theorem which uh, contains all the geometry. So Z is now smooth irreducible variety. Mm, and uh, I assume that it has no vector field. This is the assumption. And x is primitive 
final we do uh, Z isotrivial VMRT and the C PTM is Z cone structure uh, on open M X open set in X given by the uh, VMRT then then for any Z local trivialization uh, Sigma theta has values in Sigma primes so that's the main theory. The, the, the key theory. By the way, how many? Okay. So that, that's the key theory. So this really involves all the uh, final geometry, and all, all the uh, global geometry. So all these results are local. But this one is global. And this, uh, you can see that this key theory Uh, implies uh, main theorem. Uh, I didn't say our theorem, the, the, the local homogeneity. Uh, because uh, in, in our theorem, in our main theorem. Because uh, key theorem plus this assumption, that we made this assumption about Z that uh, Sigma prime Z equal to sigma prime uh, PV, tan uh, strongly tangentially non degenerate. So, by strong tangential non degeneracy, these two are the same. So, the structure function has values here, then it has values here. So, by this proposition, it's conformally parallel. So, it's, uh, it proves the theorem. So this uh, key theorem is the really the essence of all the geometry. Now I will explain why this uh, is uh, true. And the detailed proof is uh, rather involved, so I cannot give you all the proof. But let me tell you the idea why under, this, uh, under these assumptions, the structure function must have values in this strange uh, Subspace of the this home, space of homomorphism from y square b to b. So the idea is this: the, the geometric idea. The idea behind. that um, you see the, the space of lines covering X. This is a sub-variety inside the Grassmannian of lines in this, uh, this space. So so this uh, I usually denote it by script K. So this is uh, space of lines covering X. It's subspace here. So the tangent bundle of K inherits tensor decomposition. Uh, from tangent bundle of Grassmannian. The tangent bundle of Grassmannian has a natural decomposition into is to rank two Grassmannian into some certain uh, rank two bundle with uh, the complementary bundle. Complementary. The important thing is there's this rank two bundle. So this uh, tells us that uh, there's a there is sub bundle. There's a certain canonical sub bundle.
inside the tangent bundle of this space of lines uh, with tensor decomposition. Two tensor. Uh, in the sense that there's a rank two bundle tensor with some other. Uh, not Q, but some, some R. And the important thing is this rank two part. So uh, the condition H0, Tg, this forces uh, this uh, sigma theta to have values. in this W. So whatever it really means, it, it, it narrows down the possible range of sigma theta into this two-dimensional part. So this is the uh, source of that this alpha beta belongs to C alpha plus C beta. So this is somehow restricted to rank two, rank two restriction. And this somehow must contain this, this two part. So it cannot go bigger than this. So it always stays inside here. And that, uh, uh, when alpha is in uh, C hat, X hat and uh, beta is in T alpha. So this uh, forces that sigma theta uh, belongs to uh, this space, sigma prime Z. And that's exactly uh, satisfying these conditions, sigma alpha beta is. So the real reason uh, behind this comes from this uh, tensor decomposition in the space of lines. That, that, that forces uh, the structure function inside this small subspace. Maybe I'll stop here. So that, that's the end of proof. <laughs>